Have you ever seen a movie that made you feel shocked, entertained, and sad all at once? Well, get ready because The Desperate Hours is one wild ride of a film. It came out in 1955, and it's a real nail-biter. With stars like Humphrey Bogart and Frederick March, it's about a family taken hostage by three escaped convicts in their own house. As tensions rise, the family has to figure out how to outsmart the bad guys before it's too late. But here's something cool. There are lots of interesting, funny, and sad stories about how they made this movie. So keep watching for more cool stuff. Now, tell us, is there a specific part of this movie that really stuck with you? Share your thoughts and memories about the desperate hours in the Kamalan Prince below. Let's keep the chat going. Released in 1955, The Desperate Hours remains a gripping noir film directed by William Wyler. The movie captivates audiences with its intense storyline and skilled performances, creating an atmosphere that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. One notable aspect of the film is the sparse music score composed by Gail Kubik. While a powerful theme plays during the opening titles, the lack of music throughout most of the film is noticeable. It's surprising that Weiler chose to work with Kubik, who had limited experience in scoring feature films, especially considering Weiler's history of collaborating with well-known composers like Max Steiner and Alfred Newman. However, the film's minimalist score doesn't take away from its overall impact. The plot revolves around a family held hostage by escaped convicts, with the character played by Glenn Griffin resembling roles often portrayed by Humphrey Bogart. However, the exploration of revenge motives in the film could have been more developed. Despite minor criticisms, the movie delivers suspense, showcasing strong direction by Weiler and standout performances by its lead actors. The tension-filled atmosphere and compelling storytelling make it a must-watch for fans of crime dramas. In 1990, there was an attempt to remake the film by Michael Camino, but it fell short of capturing the original's essence. Mickey Rourke's overstylized performance failed to match the intensity of Bogart's portrayal, resulting in a pale imitation of the classic. Overall, The Desperate Hours stands as a prime example of mid-50s crime cinema with its timeless narrative and memorable characters leaving a lasting impression on viewers. In The Desperate Hours, Martha Scott starred as Emily Webb, originally a character in the Broadway play. Despite being cast as Emily, Martha's predecessor struggled with the role's demands leading to her replacement. This switch ultimately catapulted Martha into theater stardom. Interestingly, when Martha reprised her role for the film adaptation, the ending was altered, sparing Emily's life. This change, however, was widely criticized, tarnishing the film's reputation despite its otherwise strong execution. Another actor from The Desperate Hours, Mike Kellen, passed away shortly after another project, three days in 1963. Meanwhile, Frederick March, who also starred in the movie, earned the distinction of being the first actor to win an Academy Award for a horror film with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in 1931, a feat not repeated until Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Lambs in 1991. The Desperate Hours left a lasting impact on its cast, showcasing their talents in a tense and gripping narrative. Despite its flaws, the film remains a notable entry in the annals of cinematic history. The music composed for The Desperate Hours by Gail Kubik didn't quite sit well with Paramount's executives. They found it too modernistic. So they had some of it rescored by Daniel Amphitheatre. However, Kubik got the rights back two years later. He even published a suite from the score called Scenario for Orchestra. In two different movies, he played a character that could vanish into thin air, The Invisible Boy, and The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. He earned the nickname The Last Century Man because he was born on Christmas Day, 18899. People believe the 19th century ended in 18899, which added to the charm of his birth date. The Desperate Hours, released in 1955, features a cast member who also starred in several notable films. He co-starred in Casablanca, ranked no. One on the American Film Institute's list of top 100 U.S. love stories and appeared in four other films on a F.I.'s romance, list The African Queen, Dark Victory, Sabrina, and To Have and Have Not. Additionally, he starred in seven Oscar Best Picture nominees Smillin' Through, The Barretts of Wimpole Street, Les Miserables, Anthony Adverse, A Star is Born, One Foot in Heaven, and The Best Years of Our Lives. Among these, only The Best Years of Our Lives won the award. Notably, he portrayed Charlton Heston's mother in Ben-Hur and the Ten Kamalantrandments, and also played his wife twice on stage. 
The Desperate Hours stands as one of the many films in this actor's illustrious career, showcasing his versatility and talent in various roles. The Desperate Hours is a 1955 movie directed by John Frankenheimer. John Frankenheimer praised actor Frederick March for his exceptional talent, calling him the best actor he ever worked with. March's notable performances in other films include The Iceman Cometh and Seven Days in May. Actress Beverly Garland, who starred in The Desperate Hours, had an eventful personal life. She met her former husband, Richard Garland, at the Hollywood Players Ring Theater. Later, she discovered her husband's affair with her best friend, Lauren Crawford, leading to a millimeter-radiate divorces for both Beverly and John Crawford. Despite the divorce, Beverly retained her ex-husband's name to preserve her rising career. Humphrey Bogart's portrayal of Sam Spade in The Maltese Falcon is highly acclaimed, ranking 50 on Premier Magazine's list of 100 greatest performances of all time in 26. The Desperate Hours stands as a testament to the talents of its cast and crew delivering a gripping narrative that continues to captivate audiences decades later. In 1955, a gripping drama unfolded on screen as a family found themselves at the mercy of escaped convicts in The Desperate Hours. Humphrey Bogart, in a powerful performance, led the criminal trio, creating a tense and suspenseful atmosphere. Director William Wyler skillfully brought the story to life. The following year, Mary, briefly we would to actor Dale Robertson, remarried a Los Angeles lighting fixture retailer in 1962. Their union welcomed a daughter named Stephanie in 1964. Interestingly, the desperate hours faced challenges during production. Initially, the story struggled to gain interest for a screen adaptation. However, Hollywood figure Jesse L. Lasky championed the project, tirelessly lobbying Warner Brothers to support it. Director Irving Rapper, drawn to the idea, became more enthusiastic when he heard Humphrey Bogart was considered for the lead. Bogart's casting received a significant endorsement from Clara Clemens Gabrilowicz, daughter of a renowned author, who insisted only he could convincingly portray her father. Despite initial hesitations, Bogart accepted the role after a successful makeup test transforming him into the older character. Bogart's performance in The Desperate Hours solidified his legendary actor status, earning him the ninth spot in Empire Magazine's The Top 100 Movie Stars of All Time list in October 1997. The movie remains a classic example of suspenseful cinema, showcasing the talents of its cast and crew in bringing a thrilling story to life. The Desperate Hours, adapted from Joseph Hayes' novel and screenplay, is set in Indianapolis, his hometown. The movie earned Hayes a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for live theater in 1993. Humphrey Bogart, the lead actor, had a close friend, journalist Joe Hyams, who penned an authorized biography about him in 1966, featuring an introduction by Lauren Bacall. This biography sheds light on Bogart's life and career, providing insights into his persona and professional journey.